Alright, we're going to study about glycolysis today. And uh, we'll see how this little molecule of glucose help us do our work. So how do we do work? We do work by using some energy. And uh, that energy comes in the form of ATP. So how does this glucose generate ATP? So it's all about glycolysis and then we have uh, the Krebs cycle and after that we have the oxidative phosphorylation. So that's the whole thing of uh, cellular respiration that gives us our energy. So let's uh, just go back to our glycolysis thing. So uh, glycolysis is mainly divided into two parts. It is one is uh, the investment part and the other is harvesting part. So in the investment part we are going to invest some energy and in the harvesting part we are going to get some energy. So let's first see the investing part. So here we have a glucose and an enzyme hexokinase acts upon it. Uh, this magnesium that you see here is actually the cofactor that has this enzyme hexokinase act faster. So hexokinase in the presence of magnesium acts on glucose. It alters glucose, it changes glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. So here we have a, an enzyme hexokinase and what does it do? It's a kinase so it's obvious that it will use a phosphate and add it to the glucose and because it is a hexokinase so it is o again obvious that it will be acting on a hexose sugar. So here we have our hexose sugar and we get our phosphate, this phosphate from ATP. The ATP breaks into ATP and phosphate so this phosphate gets attached to the glucose and we get glucose 6-phosphate. So Hex glucose in the presence of enzyme hexokinase and ATP get converted into glucose 6 phosphate. Now this 6 represents this 6th carbon to which this phosphate is attached. Alright, let's go to the next step. Now this is the next step. Here we can see that we have got glucose 6-phosphate which is being converted into fructose 6-phosphate. Now we all know that glucose and fructose are isomers. So if we want to convert glucose into fructose, we want an isomerase. So we use phosphoglucose isomerase to convert glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate. Now if you just look at it, phosphoglucose is just same as glucose 6-phosphate. We can call glucose 6-phosphate as phosphoglucose 2. So we converted glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate. And if you see this, we haven't added anything. We haven't added anything at all. We have just changed the structure of glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. So it's just a slight alteration in the structure and we get a different uh, molecule. Now after that we have this fructose 6-phosphate being converted into fructose 1,6-biphosphate. Now if you see the word biphosphate you know that we're adding one more phosphate in it. This is what another phosphate that we are adding. So when we add another phosphate we know that we are going to use an enzyme called kinase. If we have got that phosphate over here, we know that we are going to use an enzyme, a kinase enzyme. So we've got this kinase and uh, because we are using it into onto fructose 6-phosphate, that is also called phosphofructose or fructose, uh, phosphofructose. So this enzyme can be called phosphofructokinase. So Fructose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 1,6-biphosphate 
by using an ATP which has been converted into ADP and phosphate. This phosphate is being attached to the first carbon, this carbon. This, this one represents the carbon number one. So, we are attaching a phosphate to carbon number one in the presence of phosphofructokinase. And here again you see that there we have got magnesium ion. So magnesium again acts as a cofactor. Now let's get to the next step. Now here we've got fructose one six biphosphate being converted into two things. Like one is glyceraldehyde three phosphate that we call G three P and another is uh, dihydroacetone phosphate you probably won't see it, let me just zoom it in um, oh wait. this is dehydroacetone phosphate so we converted this fructose 1,6,5-phosphate into two pieces we bro broke it down into two pieces into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dehydroacetone phosphate but we actually need this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate G3P we cannot process this thing we cannot put it in the harvesting stage so what we do we convert this thing into G3P by using an isomerase again so we've got triose phosphate isomerase over here that can phosphate into G3P Alright, so here are our uh, first phase ends that is called uh, the investment phase. So what did we do in investment phase? We converted glucose into glucose 6-phosphate by adding a uh, phosphate from ATP. Then we converted it into its isomer. We converted glucose 6-phosphate into its isomer fructose 6-phosphate and after that we added another phosphate by uh, using an ATP now we've got fructose 1,6 biphosphate and if you see this thing we've got two phosphates over here and we've got fructose sugar so we know that we can equally divide it into two parts each part can, uh, getting three carbons and a phosphate and uh, half of the hydrogens and half of the oxygens like it can get three one of the molecules can get the three oxygen the other can get the three oxygens and uh, then we have uh, over here 12 hydrogens one molecule can get six hydrogens the other can get six hydrogens again and so we know that we can break it into two parts so we're going to break it into two parts so fructose 1 6 biphosphate or just fructose biphosphate is being broken into two parts one is G3P and the other is dihydroacetone phosphate so we use an aldolase to break it into two parts but we know that we can only process G3P we cannot process this dihydroacetone phosphate and we just cannot let this thing go waste so what we do we uh, we convert this thing into G3P because we know that these both things are identical we just you know broke the fructose biphosphate into two equal parts so we can convert the dihydroacetone phosphate dihydroacetone phosphate into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so we use an isomerase to convert it and in the end of this phase we've got two G3P molecules so this is the end of the investment phase and um, I hope you understood it I know it's hard to learn that whole thing but if you just watch the video again and again and I in the end you might you know get a little memory of it so um, this was the investment phase in the next video I'll tell you about the harvesting phase and I got that picture from Wikipedia if you want it you can take it from there and uh, thank you for watching the video See you in the next one.